Eh, Fiskalisia er fjordekne hjertelig velkommen. Jeg er et sofisk regersinn, og jeg er farmer i Provita. Og til må fyrre til å få en plass i kanskje er jeg synes det er trangelig. Dette er det her som vi finner hva det er enda ned i. Men eh, jeg hadde vi fjellet at eh, få en sin brosjur av Løyka vel. Og så har vi hun at la spørre alt aren. Det er et eh, kildje alt lengst. Det la... Nei. Jeg vil bare si bare noe veien at det er flere nekfmaterialer her og borgenom som er av færreskom og av danskom. Og det er av kjep. Så bare det som kildje ikke engst, det vet at det er eisne opplysning her og hun av færreskom. Og jeg har funnet seg til det er ære og det er oppgave at omsette av færreskom, og jeg gjør det så leies. Så jeg er eisene en øyrer, og jeg gjør ikke så særlig vel å ta seg av færreskom. Men så for så vil det have meg omsette, så jeg kjenner nekk til Rachel's Vineyard, og jeg har eisene ta seg nå etter og frem, vi burner det, og vi får det det gjør. Så, og jeg brenner for det, kvinner som, og menn som pønnes der fast og tøkk. Så at han vil ha med Gerda, så de må bare omskylde dette veldig fair og skal høre det. Det gjør meg det beste. Først av alt vil vi velkomme deg, Bernadette. Vi var sammen i dag, og Lampa. Vi hadde en veldig god aftenen, som var veldig informativ, edukativ og inspirerende. Vi ser frem til denne sessjonen. And uh, we really are appreciate all the people who have come today. We are not used to, to have uh, a lot of people at our meetings, so uh, we are really glad also today. I'll just say something in Faroese again before you uh, can start. Provita, som tek om flest som kan, og så er det her løyga som fellesskapen og ferien som helter male om at løyve er høylagt, løyve er godkjøve, løyve som er oppe i loftene, for vi vet det alt og til løyve som er verdt han profileren som provider hever. Det siste året, eller nesten tve årene, har vi løyve som bukt etter hvert annet kan vi gjøre enn bare å si at det er ikke løyve, for det er akkurat mennesker å ta hvert annet løyve. Og Ta er det at folk kan se til akkurat øysene kan være, og er atlandet at det skal være av kvinnene, vattene og kvinnene. Og tog er at det er ikke uten konsekvens at det er et liv. Og det kan vi si at vi tøler noen rykkene, kan man si, er det sånn fra her fastetøkka har vært fri i en tredjevar eller mor. Og i hele sånn samband har vi så bjøa Bernadette Golding som arbeider og i en fellenskap som heter Rachel's Vineyard som har vært en opprunnet i Amerika som har det arbeidet så vi er at kjøva kvinnene og vi har vært frem på faste døk og løy vi at syrke det vil si at kjøva kvinnene Høve til å komme frem, vi tror vi som lykker innenfor det, som det ikke slipper, ikke rom for det. Og også når mannen har ikke rom kvart i samfunnet, og etter familien, etter fra noen øren jeg kommer frem ved, at jeg kommer frem og legger det her som det kan være å få løyve et syrt. Men det kommer noen greier mer fra, så you're welcome to start. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to speak with you today because I'd like to share with you how abortion has affected my life in the hope that it will speak to the hearts of women who are suffering in silence and also speak to women who may be experiencing a crisis pregnancy right now. I would say God is glad for you and I am glad for you to have a move like you. I come to us with you. Og han vil si fra hvordan fastetøkker har avvisket henne løyve, og hvordan det avvisket løyve til øren som har tidligere fastetøkker. As a young girl, I emigrated to live in England. Som en unge jente i forhold til England. I had grown up in a large family of 17 children. Jeg var oppvaksen i en større familie, og sett jeg en børn om. And we were always told that, you know, to protect life. My mother had 17 children, so... Having an abortion, or even the word abortion, meant nothing to me. We'd felt it all the way that we'd got to wear your loyve. Mama mine had a sex on button, 
Och att, att, att få ett fastighetsök att det var helt okänt. I also grew up, the, grew up with the knowledge that if you became pregnant out of wedlock, you would bring shame on your family. Fear that I'd, I suppose the fear would be that you would never be able to return home again. If you got pregnant, there was no way you could ever go back because the family would be hugely shamed by this. If man blev på vägen så kunde man inte för att att det var en störst skam för familjerna. So I emigrated to England and I began to uh, experiment with alcohol and I became sexually active. Så so efter att England och jag började att experimentera, vi var såna och jag blev också sexuellt aktiv. The end result of my search was I became pregnant. Vi tar slita att jag blev på vägen. I was filled with fear. Jag var fullt av åtta. I didn't know which way to turn. Fear that I'd never see my family again. Fear of losing my job. Fear of being judged and condemned by my friends. So much that surrounds the decision to abort is motivated by fear. So much that surrounds the decision to abort is motivated by fear. I suffered from extreme nausea. I was constantly sick. I could not keep any food in my stomach. And this continued for many, many weeks. And I didn't really know how far along I was in my pregnancy. I was admitted to hospital with this terrible nausea. Where the doctor confirmed that I was pregnant. I remember him telling me how far along I was, but I blotted that out of my mind. I cried very much. And I kept repeating to the doctor, I can't be pregnant. I don't want to be pregnant. That evening, I was admitted to the, to the hospital and a young doctor came and sat on my bed. The doctor asked me how I felt about being pregnant. And I quickly told him I didn't want to be pregnant. Because I said to him, I'll never see my family again. So he quickly introduced the idea to me that I could have a termination. So say han ordliga skött att det kunde få en fastetök. The doctor assured me that it was a very simple procedure. Läkna säger att det var en ordliga ankelt process. And that it was just like removing uh, some cells from my body. It was like having a tooth removed. Och det är akkurat samma som att få en tandtidsen. The word baby was never mentioned. Or a button at the baby were ungodly sacked. And this was the beginning of the lies of abortion. There was no mention of the risks or the after effects. That day I turned my back on God and his greatest gift to me, the gift of life. Very quickly, the following morning, I was wheeled down to the ward where the abortion was to take place. And to this day, I can remember the face of the anaesthetist peering into my face. And assuring me that it was very simple and in a little prick of a pen in my arm, I would go to sleep and I would wake up and it would be all over. And said they were hardly ankled. They could bear for a sprite in arm and chamber or take a whack and so all the evil stuff. When I woke after the abortion, I was screaming the place down. Take a whack and I at the now first took and I scratched you, scratched you. I was being held down in the bed by three nurses. There were three or four sisters who could have held me near his arms. Because somewhere in my subconscious. I must have realized the enormity of what had happened. They eventually had to sedate me. And when I woke, I remember thinking, my baby is gone. And, and initially there was some relief. Because I could see that all of my, you know, my problems were over. 
nobody would ever know. So I knew we're on your problem, or after, or on your school to come and read I left the hospital. If our first sugar was known, but I was not the same person. And they were each of the same menace. A part of me died in that hospital. I passed a mare die at hand day in sugar was known. I felt like there was a big A on my forehead. I felt that they were in store a box to have a. That everyone could read my terrible secret. At at the corner, less than when for fairly handled. Immediately that night, I began to have these horrific nightmares. Taxama kvalte ibejinte for orderly ringa mar. In the nightmare, I could see this little baby. Men i dreamte kunde se en liten baby. Always just out of my reach. Bänt och så fyra med att här kunde kunde få fatt. But I could never catch this baby. Och jag kunde inte få fatt i baby nå. I had flashbacks to the day of the abortion. Flashbacks. <laughs> Suicidal thoughts. I Oops. thought if I end it all now, you know, nobody will care, nobody will miss me. I hooked some shawl more, I hooked some sager, alt leot nu, so far anchen at hooked some at let utterly like it now. I had a terrible fear of somebody finding out. You were hardly a bench in fear at Uncle School to find out out. I didn't go out very much in the first weeks after my abortion. I remained indoors. I were for the mess the in that, we find in fear the first week. Because I thought everyone couldn't would know what I had done. So it held it utterly. He couldn't have eaten what he had just. And I remember going out at night time to eat. Or a minute that he fell out and fell to nothing to eat. And ordering the food and looking at it and being so scared, I couldn't even raise my hand to 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 eat the food. I was shaking. Or that effect made him eat. They were so bent that they couldn't even go and eat. They were so ordinary. So I would leave very quickly without eating. So I fell out there out and eat. Sometime down the road, perhaps nine months later, I met this ma- wonderful man. Kanske nuttjer man att nå i mitt en en min manna en ordliga gåer man manna. Who treated me differently to any other person I'd ever met? Han behandlade mig annorlunda än att lina som i hela. And in and the intervening months before this uh, meeting, I had become very um, almost, I would say, an alcoholic. I would drink and drink to make to to put myself into a stupor. I drank or drank for Jeremy Boitz. Because in my naivety, I thought that perhaps I could have my baby back so in I, the nightmares. So I held I married him. They couldn't form it. But not after. I told be, some time later. I realized that this man and I were going to marry. And I, be- I realized that I'd have to tell him about my abortion. So stött att nå i i visste väl att vi skulle giftas och att jag skulle fortälja honom om första tökarna. Because we met and we got married within nine months of our meeting. In a few nuts man är att nå vi mötes giftas vi. When I told him about my abortion, Ta- I think it was horror. To this day, I don't know. He didn't look very happy. Ta- I fortalt honom första tökar i halt att att jag sa bara rastlo en liten hon. Jag var inte tjuv men i halt det. But we never mentioned it again. Men så har man inte tos om det att. Very quickly, I became pregnant with my first child. So nok så skött blev jag på väg med min första barna. And the nine months of my pregnancy were fairly happy. Och här ser nu jag mannen var var nok så gott. But when the time came for me to give birth, men ta i skulle aja. I immediately became really traumatized. I began to orderly at vara benchen och avverska. I was afraid to give birth. They were benchen för att aja. So eventually, I gave birth to my my child. So så fick jag barnen. I had a beautiful young a little girl. En vacker gentle. And I can remember the first time I held her in my arms. Och i minnes till det första för jag hällt henne i mina armar. I can remember the joy in my heart that I thought my heart was going to explode with joy. I minnes att det lejde som i mina hjärta den dag. But that was short lived. Men hade det stått. Because when the women in the ward with me would come and say to me, "Is this your first child?" Ta ta att alla kvinnor nu i dalen kom till henne och spurde efter att det var min första barn. I knew it wasn't my first child. Jag visste att det inte var min första barn. I knew that I had aborted my first baby. Jag visste att jag hade aborterat min första baby. And it was like a knife twisting around in my heart. Och det var som en knuv som onkel vände runt i mina hjärta. Abortion stole my peace, my joy. Första tycker jag stole min min fri och min glädje. On the anniversary of the abortion, it was a nightmare. Ta kva, ta dagen ta, yeah, what's the anniversary? Anniversary, anniversary. yeah, anniversary, yeah. Ta dagen ta 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 datena. Ta hon finns ju fast tog att ta kom att det kvarsta år hade varit mera. I would go into a deep depression. I blev early deprimera. On the due birth date of my aborted ta baby. Ta batna ta mer skulle det hilda förenga det. I would feel very very sad. I would early early trist. My little girl became stronger, but All of the time I felt 
that God wasn't going to leave her with me for very long because God was going to punish me through my child. So abortion stole the joy that I should have been experiencing in my little girl's growing up years. There are many triggers for a post-abortive woman. Reminders, uh, triggers. For instance, the day of the abortion or the time of the year. I had my abortion in December, so for a long time, December became a very sad month, sad time of the year for me. Or perhaps it was the music they played in, at the clinic on that day. That can bring on horrible memories. Or the sound of a vacuum cleaner. For any woman who's had a vacuum uh, abortion where they vacuum the, the, the unborn baby, that can be a nightmare. I became pregnant again when my little girl was about 12 months old. And I miscarried that pregnancy. Then I pre- became pregnant again later on that year. And I gave birth to another beautiful little girl. And like that, at her, when she was born, the, the, the fear that God was going to take her from me. I would plead with God. I would beg him. I would say, please, God, don't harm my children for what I've done. Because I, I didn't believe I deserved to be happy. I deserved to have any more children. So when my second child was almost 18 months old, she became very sick. And she was admitted to a hospital in London. Where she, she has suffered from en- uh, encephalitis, yeah, inflammation of the brain. Yeah, in brain, in Caused by an ear infection. Yeah, that, yeah, yes. mm-hmm. And the little, my daughter had to be admitted to hospital and operated on. Her brain had to be operated on. Hon var inlagd och det skulle operera av Highland Jenna. And after the operation, she was paralyzed down her right side. Och att hon kunde hon inte bruka högra sida. And I believed it was God punishing me for what I'd done. Och jag hade tyvärr Gud som straffade mig för det här som jag hade gjort. So in the years in between, as my children began to grow up, I began to go in and out of denial. Så här som jag är nu har barnen börjat inte bli större. Jag får vi kvarst. Uh, if in or out, we at, have knocked it out or it from there. I would push it, I would push it down and, and pretend it didn't happen and it try and suppress it. <coughs> my healing began when I began to realize I had never shared my abortion with anyone. And I'd begun to become involved in, in my parish. Working with some of the sisters in my parish. And I became very close to one of the sisters. And one day I decided I would share my secret with her. Believing that in, when I would tell her, she would look at me in horror. I felt that I hon is good for tell you, and so far hon hit you on there. We we wrestle or that she wouldn't consider me suitable to work in the parish. At han hey sagt that they were oh husk that are by umining hype. Because I felt such a hypocrite. For I felt accurate some men there. So that day, I remember, I closed my eyes and I started to tell her my story. So that day, and I let Anna after, and so began to tell you how to move yourself. And I remember at, at the time I didn't want to open my eyes because it would just let Anna up because I, I this we were very close. So we were already going winner, and I believed I was going to see horror in her face. Oh, I felt that they were such a rush that we had to unleash. But when I opened my eyes, she was crying. And I let Anna up, she grabbed. And she put her arms around me. And she said to me, don't waste your suffering. Let God use it for good. 
The isolation had ended. Så te att vara avstängt, det var livet. I had begun to dismantle the secret. Jag var begynt att täcka hästen här hemlighet sånt. And that was the beginning of my journey back to God. Och att det var början till min affär att det gick ut. And the little the, the little nun said to me, you know, Jesus loves you warts and all. It doesn't matter what you've done. Och ta lite nån han säger vi mer Jesus älskar du vi ja. Jag vet inte hur det ska vara och det hela. Och ta lite mycket kvar du har gjort. There is no sin that you can commit that God can't forgive. Det är inte sin som du kan göra att Gud inte kan förgiva. His mercy is greater than anything you could ever do. Hans remissgång säger mig är större än allt det som du kunde gjort. And I often say. I danced with the man from Nazareth that night. Och jag ser ofta att jag dansar med han mannen från Nazareth att kvällt. It was like a, a warm blanket had been wrapped around me, and I danced in the room in my heart, in my spirit. Det är också som om jag lagt en turk, turk, ett lite chuka teppe runt om mig, och att att han dansar i armen av Jesus att kvällt. Because I felt I had been a prisoner for so many years. Jag felt att jag hade varit i fängslen och i så nära kvar. Like in the message of Lazarus in the scriptures, you know, I've been locked away behind a stone in a tomb. Som Lazarus och evangelierna. Jag var instängd att en för en stein. I had imprisoned myself. Jag hade sett mig själv i fängslen. Full of guilt and shame and self-hatred. Fyllt vi vi skam och 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 skam och ja skam och och skuldkänslor och och hatred av mig själv. Abortion has made a, made a deep and hidden wound in our societies. Fast det är att jag just en djup och och sår i vårt samhälle som är väl kräckt. Many women and men are suffering the consequences of abortion. Det är nog kvinnor och män som som pynst av av fast det är. Every abortion is a death in a in a family. För en enaste fast det är är en död i en familj. And after the, a, a death you need to grieve. Och att han är en dag så måste du söka. But with abortion, you're not allowed to grieve. Men vi fastar till att du först inte lov att söka. It's a forbidden grief. Det är en 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 sör ja en sorg som är för för barnen ja. Yes. And you might ask, who are these women who have abortions? Och du kan gå spyr jag kvar är hela kvinnorna som får fastar till att. There are sisters. Det är också systrar. Our wives. Också koner. Our relatives. Our family, sisters, our friends, our vinner, people we work with, folk som vi arbetar med, people in our churches, folk i vårt samkomma, and you may never know because it's such a big secret. Och du kan inte komma och ta av det här är en så stor stor hemlighet. And the wound in their hearts is reopened. Och det sår i deras hjärta är upplatt en kvinn. Every time they hear a baby cry. Cry if I. Fair to hire a baby girl. See a pregnant woman. Such a corner some of away in. And the pain is so deep that sometimes. Or the pain is so deep that we crushed. They can't even say the word abortion. They do it and gong out tell at the order. Without her. Without it causing huge interior distress. Or to not have your really a story. For we'll say in the noise. And with every abortion loss, we can honest fast to a miss. There is a father who is deeply wounded in his heart. The er en pappa som är isne djup sårt och isne hjärta. Because men suffer too after abortion. To a man poinest isne att man fast to a. Many women choose abortion to save a relationship. Nek för kvinnor välja fast att höka för att bjärka ett förhållt. Och att prevent the boyfriend from leaving. Och kanske så att skäkren tar tiden för att inte avstäga. The boyfriend may say it's your decision. Han skäkren eller maven säger kanske att det är tvungen att avgöra. Or I'll support you in whatever decision you make. Eller är stolet här vi vill ta avgöra som du tar. Or else it might be an outright threat. Eller kanske hon är hot. To leave if she doesn't abort. Eller han får avstäga hvis hon får säga inte att fast att höka. Most relationships don't survive an abortion. Ta flesta förhåll i överlever inte en första tök. There may be a lot of anger and resentment. Det kan vara nekt för vrede och motsättningar. If one of them went along with the abortion to please the other. Vis en tog första tök och fyra gör hinnet lej. And if the abortion takes place before the marriage. Och vis första tök är framför åren folk blir vrede gift. 
it will have a huge impact on that couple's relationship. They have a negative consequence if you're tired of forehold. And it can be especially a huge problem if the abortion is kept a secret from their spouse. Og det kan være særlig et stort problem hvis fastetøkker er hemmelighed for at han som man er gift vi. Who will not know the reason for their spouse's emotional problems? Og det vil ikke kunne tale han som der gift vi har sådan et problemer, chancelige problemer. Abortion is like an impenetrable wall between them. Fastetøkker er ikke som en stor vægge mellem dem her som ansigtet slæber i jakken. It's like a knife cutting through the heart of their relationship. Er som et knøv som skærer i jakken om tale forholdt. Abortion is often presented as painless and victimless. Uh, Fast taker er ofte presenteret som akker som er uten poine og uten, uten offre. The women are told there's nothing there. Kvinnen er, er, får at vite at her er ansje. Just a, bun- a bunch of cells. Det er nok et kjikkel. Or as one young lady was told, it's just a clot. Og bare en blåsamling. They are told it's their right to choose. Det får at vite at her tar det rett at velge. A simple procedure. Bare en lille... Uh, Life will soon get back to normal. Or life will be shut, akrat som det var før. Very soon, many women realize their life doesn't get back to normal. Det er rettelig skjøtt at nek for kvinnene får å vite at life blir ikke normalt etter. Contrary to what they have been led to believe. Motsett til det som de finner seg å vite. Many women experience flashbacks to the abortion. Nek for kvinnene får flashbacks, det vil si at de får mindene fra faste og rett. Depression. Uh, they were deprimed over suicidal thoughts, uh, shelter tanker, eating disorders. Oh, they have a problem with eating. Guilt uh, or ch- uh, yeah, chancellor or um, ch- uh, school chancellor. Shame. They uh, scum myself. Addiction problems. So they were bonded of emusk. Broken relationships. Or forholds som held itcha. And very often the woman must face all of this pain alone. Or after stand the queen and hardly einsmatil we has near pain in her. One of the most difficult things to do is to mourn the loss of your child. With abortion, there is no body, no funeral, no grave to visit, no family and friends to help you grieve. One woman had this to say to me. Someone told me that I should grieve over my loss. Onker sier vi mer, det skulle det sørge i for å møte det som er mist. But I feel guilty when I do. Men jeg får skuldtjeneste til å gjøre det. How can I grieve for a child whose life I ended? Hvordan kan jeg sørge for å bøte som jeg har vært drivet? What right do I have to grieve for a child I didn't want? Hvor er det en rett til å have jeg et sørge for å bøte jeg vil ikke få? When I chose abortion, didn't I give up that right to grieve? Ta jeg valgte foster tøkker, har jeg ikke valgt fra meg å ta retten til å sørge. Many women are told to move on after their abortions. Next friend for we that they should be able to come away. That they made that right decision at that time in their lives. That they took a right to abjure or to let it have a life. That their feelings are hormonal. That their chancellor bear a hormone. That their guilt and remorse. That their skun chancellor or that their anger are because of social and religious conditioning. Bear to occur to to finish your jack name that religious at the social um um curve. No woman is proud of having had an abortion. Der ansjen kvinne er stolt av at have haft en foster tøk. For everyone involved. For alle de som er blant og boi. The experience of abortion is associated with shame. Foster tøker her er sammen med skum. Guilt and grief. Skuldkjensler og sorg. Suppression and denial. Her vi et kjørt under og avnøkter det are the most common means of coping after an abortion. Det er det mest vanlige... Ja, hvordan sier man? Det er så lei at man regner et iverlive. Vi er kjørt av nye, et eller avnøkte, og sier at det ikke er hent. After an abortion, and because the procedure is so devastating, at den er fast tøker, og tøy at det er så øyelatsende, many women go into denial. Nek for kvinner begynner ordentlig et avnøkte der. For many, this can provide some short-term relief. However, eventually the emotional and spiritual pain becomes so severe that women believe they deserve to suffer for what they've done and find many ways to punish themselves. 
For many, this suffering and complicated grieving can go on for years. For neck of time and has her poining or 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 sorg can blive we or we or neck for. And the woman can use this guilt to memorialize her child. Or kvinnan kan bruka hette her sorg till att som en armening av henne barnen. You see. We don't have any photograph of our children. We have onche onche boy lad vakra barten. So the only way to hang on to that child is to hang on to the guilt and the grief. So the einaste mat at halt oi has ner barten er at halt oi sorgene og og skuldchancellor. Women who choose abortion do not do so because of freedom of choice. Kvinnor som väljer fosterhök och det gör det inte då att de har fri val. They do so because they feel they have no freedom and they have no choice. They dare to try to feel that they have an unfreeheid or unfreeheid. And it is so important that they're not silenced by shame and fear of condemnation. Or they're so tidnig om ite at they er they blir um at they blir ite utan rätt vägna tesmer hänt or they blir ite fördömt. And my prayer today is that many more women like myself. Om min bön är det är att de nåt mer kvinnor som är. And also men, or men, Eisner, when they are healed, a tate er greater, will get the courage to speak out, a tate for mot till a tose harsh, and show the world what abortion really is. Or we severe in a quad foster taker ordly air, the killing of our innocent children, at we drape okra o shildy button. It will help those who have never had to make this choice. Det er for at hjælpe dem, som har været unge til at være udfyldt her til her valde. To better understand, at shildy better. The pressures that women face. Kusse kusse ringt a stor trøst er at kvinder tager dem og tager dem stand og fremmer for hesten. And to have more compassion. Og at hjælpe dem med at vise dem mere samtænksomhed. And it will help. It will help those who are suffering in silence. Og til for at hjælpe dem med som pynest ensomhed og og utan rød. To see compassion in the people around them. At sige samtænksomhed og i tage folk rundt om dem. And help them to realize. Og hjælpe dem med at at go chen or sit chen that they would be ex- accepted with compassion and understanding at they were more teaching we we some chancellor or we we uh, yeah they were well more teaching <laughs> there are many myths about abortion to er neck for server some gong rund um foster tuck so. and one of the myths are is that women who abort do so out of selfishness or ein er at kvinnor som får foster tuck they gör det bara av av egoism Many people mistakenly assume that no woman has an abortion unless she wants one. The neck folk som gör fel att att de hållt att kvinnorna får en fostertök att de hon vill ha det. In fact, while many women believe they need an abortion, very few, if any, want one. In fact, just that the neck kvinnor som hållt att de har bruk för en fostertök, de ordlar för som instjuda. And this reality is described in a rather famous line. Och här sen här är faktiskt. Well sacked or in a crescentinger by an American pro-life feminist. An uh, Americaner or some er uh, pro pro vita or a feminist in America. Frederica Matthews Green. An actor Frederica Matthews Green and Cornerfog. And she wrote. Or hon skriva ja. No woman wants an abortion. No a uh, unchuk finne will have a foster taker. As she wants an ice cream. Som hon ens ens just said an ice or a Porsche. Etline Beal. Yes. <laughs> A woman wants an abortion. An kvinna instjus her ait foster taker. As an animal caught in a trap. Som ait jaur som er fanka. Wants to gnaw off its own leg. Vil ete så en ekne bein for slæppe fru. And this quote was widely used widely used by abortion providers to further their agenda. Her neck folk som 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 jaur a foster taker som bruker has ner setninger. Fyra at sælje foster taker. But the following two sentences were left out. Men her tvær setninger er træt som han har eisne sagt som kom ikke vi. Og nu skal det ikke hærde. Abortion is a tragic attempt. A foster taker er en ordentlig surgely arrived to escape a desperate situation. At slippe under en en omstøve som er forfærdeligt by an act of violence and loss. Vi er jæger som er faktisk til er harskæppe og til er en at misse. Abortion is not a sign that women are free. Foster taker ikke er tætten at kvinder er fri. It is a sign they are desperate. Til er tætten at de har ondt til klar ondt andet til du ondt andet de har ondt andet vel. Abortion is violence masquerading as compassion. Foster taker er herskap som som spiller at at det er miskonsen. With abortion, one heart is stopped and one heart is broken. Tag man tog som foster taker så er det et hjerte som stikker og et som er brudt. 
I believe that sooner or later every woman who's had an abortion will grieve for that baby that she has lost. In, and in a moment I will talk to you about Rachel's vineyard. <laughs> Emptying that grief to make room for God's grace is the work of Rachel's vineyard. At our retreats, the post-abortive woman meets the God of mercy and compassion. And I'd like to quote for you from a piece that was written by my Irish priest who works with me on the retreats in Ireland. And this is what he had to say. I will read a little bit of some prestige that we work with in Ireland. These weekends are truly amazing. These weekends are truly amazing. These weekends are truly amazing. Women who have felt isolated, ashamed and alone. Women who have felt that they are afskåren og fullt av 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 skam og ensomhet. Finally get a voice. Endelig at finde sin rød. And are allowed to tell their story. Og det får lov til at fortælle servene chasset. In a safe, accepting atmosphere. Og en omkværer som er er trick og som tager imod dem. And begin the process of healing. Og så bliver det process af at blive frisket. This all occurs in a non-judgmental atmosphere. Where they experience total acceptance. Where they believe that they are accepted as they are. And are truly treated like prodigal daughters. Or they are behandled as as daughters who are booster, booster, starter daughters who are coming after. They come from all denominations and none. They come from all possible samkommer or ancha. Where they can safely talk. Og her kunne de tosse uten å være... Share, cry and laugh together. Deile, gråter og flenne sammen. The tears of the Catholic. Tårene til katolikk nå. The former Catholic. Tan som er katolikker. The Protestant. Protestant. The agnostic. Tan som er agnostikere. And the atheist are all indistinguishable. Og tan som er eisene godleisinger. Det er ønske måneder. And I have seen how these women and men too go on to be great witnesses of hope and healing. Og jeg har sett hvordan disse kvinnene og mennene eisene blir restaurer vittne for våren og grøying. And in finding forgiveness, og ta til å finne for gjeving, they find humility and renewal of their faith. Til å bli til å finne eisene emighet og at det er trykk for er enda nødt. They also strengthen the cause. Til å gjøre det at han they also strengthen the cause of advancing human respect for every human life. Or to help her, the person strongest for at for a man alive, word to help her time and ice to take those out. I'd like to quote from Romans eight twenty eight. We know that by turning everything to their good, we wait that our good when the alt to to God. God cooperates with all those who love Him. Good some are by we up to those who else can. With all those he has called according to his purpose. At the time when some hand ever cut the letter, hands are mining, hands are end of month. And as I have reflected on these words, or to a book some has never or in a rover, rover where you brave no. I have come to believe. Er come to let trick for that one of the keys to turning the tide against abortion in the world. At ein lichel, som er eit som er lichel til at vente. Altern i mot det første tørker i verden er. Lies within the ranks of post-abortive women and men. Det er faktisk i midten til kvinnene og mennene som hever finnes i første tørker. When these women and men are healed. Det er her som mennene og kvinnene er grødt. They will get the courage to speak out more freely on the issue of abortion. Det får mot til at tåse meg fryt om første tørker. Bringing to light the dark side of an experience that has devastated their lives. As they are healed of their hurts, they will be empowered and impassioned. They will be empowered and impassioned. They will be empowered and impassioned. To take their message of pain and recovery. 
at bear a bosque apa, chaser um poina o um at liver frisk after. Of hope and healing. Of woan o gruyink. To the world around them. Ut o verina. Ut o atl te sma runt um te. The Bible assures us that nothing is impossible with God. Bible and see o kan et anche er au mervlet we gud. And so I believe he will bring about a great good. So et shikfe at han fere skape et stersk gott. Gott och stärk. From this great evil, caused by the misuse of our free will, some some hand tied with misbruker och free will. Among those goods will be greater compassion for sinners. I medlen tag tagoa vill att vi har en nekt bättre samtänsla och nya för det som är sintra. And a greater respect for human life. Och en större vilning för människor liv. So I'd like now to share with you perhaps a little bit more about Rachel's Vineyard. If I tell you to listen to more on Rachel's Vineyard. But I can't emphasize enough. And I can't itch on the streak and I'll meet you. The huge suffering. The story pointing. The devastating effect of abortion. The cause of all that in the foster care air. It's destroying the lives of women. The all that you live. Men. Of quinnum or monnum. Families. Family. And society. Or failure. I have seen on my weekends. I have a seen on my weekend shift now. Women who have, who have been suffering for some of them forty years. Quinners some have a point to be crushed if you are to R. Suffering from this terrible pain. Pointers for a person here for a period of time at where I've scored them. And I'd like to share with you now a little bit on the background of Rachel's Vineyard. Rachel's Vineyard was founded in the United States. Uh, Rachel's Vineyard was founded in America by Dr. Teresa Burke. At the era in Lackner, some Ida Teresa Burke, a psychotherapist or a psychotherapist. Today, it is in 47 states of America. At the era in Rachel's Vineyard, it is in 47 states of America. In 18 countries and growing. At the age of London, at the era of wax, at the time. Dr. Teresa Burke has written a powerful book that I hope will someday be translated into Faris, Forbidden uh, Grief. Dr. Teresa Burke has escrived a orderly and stark book, so I to Forbidden Grief, to fjall the sorgen, and one wonder that they were umset to Faris kind of. The unspoken pain of abortion. The pain is an ancient toaster um, so we stand by the fast talker. And I'm living proof. Or er, I'm living the proof. That God can make miracles out of our mistakes. That God can scape. Under your okra mistake. That he can use our sins to make better people out of us. And can break our okra sin for a year, okra to better manage. And that is why I sit here before you today. Or to try to sit in front and for a ticken here with you. Rachel's Vineyard uh, was, as I say, founded in the United States, but in 2003 I brought it to Ireland. In 2003, come Rachel's Vineyard to America to Ireland. And to date, I have facilitated 66 weekend retreats. Or oh, idea have a light in six or three retreats at the week shifter in Ireland. I have taken it to England. I have taken it to England. Malta, Malta, the Lebanon, the Lebanon, and next month I travel to Glasgow in Scotland. On next month I fly to Glasgow in Scotland. And please God, my prayer is that Rachel's Vineyard will start soon in the Faroe Islands. Oh, good, very love, my born air at shut. Where Eisner Rachel's Vineyard is finished here in Ferry. Rachel's Vineyard began in America in 1995. Rachel's Vineyard began in America in 1995. In its present form, so we cannot do it. And since then, there have been 3,500 retreats worldwide. Or so in total, have there been 3,500 retreats at the week shifter at least in America, which have helped at least 32,000 women and men. Some have helped a quarter of. Two or three for two thousand women or men, and those figures as of zero eight. Or two for two thousand or eight. You'll hear many arguments out there in the world today about abortion. To hear a neck for argumentation, it there out there very no unfaster talk. And one of the biggest one I find is if a woman is raped. Or the one that's the worst, the air is like corn air netting. People say, "Oh, this woman shouldn't have to carry this baby to term." Folks, he meant has a con. Hans could itch a bear a button from till. Perhaps he was. Perhaps he wasn't a nice guy. Maybe he was a bad guy in the eyes of her family. How can my daughter carry this baby? Can't give her an itch and go away. But who's can button my bear had her button? Regardless of the circumstances of conception. The Eloika meets a who said button her jeep. 
there's a human life growing within that mother's womb. There's a little heart beating under her heart. That deserves to live. And I've just quote here from this book. Victims and victors. Victims and victors. Yeah, I will see. Yes. Offer or. And it's all about victims of rape speaking out. The largest study done of women who've had pregnancies resulting from rape are incest. There were a study of 200 women. 89% of those who aborted a pregnancy from sexual assault explicitly stated said the orderly clashed that they regretted their abortion. At the anger of the foster children. They often described their as their abortion. They have often told on their on foster children just there as more traumatic and difficult to deal with. At our in more eyelashing that or were at handle than the effects of the rape. And there at were a native. So women who are raped. So women are some native now. Resent. They will, they will let you have that. The fact that the pro-choice element used them to further their agenda. Today now we also have the new abortion drug. RU486. RU486. And I believe many young women are gain, getting this from the internet. And I believe that this, the suffering as a consequence, will be far more traumatic. Because the woman is administering the drug herself. One young woman who participated in my retreat had taken this drug and she aborted in a McDonald's restaurant. And in the ladies' room, the blood could be seen flowing from underneath the cubicle. Many women have died from this drug worldwide. About, um, medicine. Last night I had an email from the States and I was told that 52 million surgical abortions have been, been performed in the United States since 1973. So you see Abortion is not the answer for women. So Abortion is a lie. And we women believed that lie. And then we realize afterwards that it, we've bought the lie, but it's too late. So my hope today is that, that many of you here will know somebody or will leave here today with the message that there is hope after abortion. There is healing. And to remember that when God forgives, he forgets. And he puts our sins out into the deepest ocean, gone and forgotten. And he puts a big sign up on the shore. No fishing. He never takes it back. Once we have come in repentance to the Lord, 
our souls are washed clean. I never that we are coming to God or 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 at Ocra Saul Erin. My soul has been washed clean by the Lord. My soul at Chamer were washed Erin of Harinon. And He has given me this great gift of being able to speak out. Oh, and He rejoiced me to store a gob at Ekan Tosa out. And I have the blessing of my husband. We have the well signals of man and Chamer. And my children. Oh, button at Chamer. Who are totally behind me. So we're at the film we're hundred percent. And I will travel to the ends of the earth. Oh, I will fare at least to the end To tell women and men. At for tell you, quin or men. There is hope, there is healing. At the own or at the grave. And for any young woman who is in a crisis pregnancy. For a tangent of some heroin crep, some up a vein or in crep To remember that there's a little heart beating under your heart. At minus till at a little yasht, some slow under to in a yasht. And you can give, choose to give life to that little one. Or to convey you at your at ayat abatna. With the support and the love of your families. We still, or care like a fraternal family. I'd like to share with you now briefly a few stories from women who've participated in my retreat. It will bear a we take a new neck or serve of some criminal, or some heavy loot tack or retreat. On the chamber. screen here, this is Rachel's Vineyard Ireland website. Had the, uh, Rachel's Vineyard Ireland had her high massage cha, cha Bernadette. Yes. <coughs> one woman had this to say. She said, one thing that abortion has done to me is to cause or encourage an eating disorder. Ein Kona sieht eit zum Fossetek über Josh für mehr at hauer at effekt ein ette at alle wir ette. I know that my abortion has caused much self hatred. Er weit at Fossetek über mehr hauer hauer skap nek jatre jatre myself. And that was expressed in my eating disorder. Und da wusste sehr ui da hast nir ette und oh oh leer so mei hei. Another lady said. At Anna Kona sieht. My abortion left me empty, alone, and, despair, and in despair. Fast took a shamer, let me at ever home, einsamatl or utan wall. It has taken me to a place I almost could not come back from. That took me to a place I nest and could itch a comma after from. The self hatred I see every time I look in the mirror. The hatred of my shoulder is such a cray affair, it hits you speckling on. Has been my constant companion for years. Hey, where am I in for your neck for? Another lady said, "My abortion has left me with an empty place in my heart." I am a nun and queen. I say, "At first, talk to your mother. However, let me act to be a tongued place in my heart." When we are all at home together, how we are at home, my family feels incomplete. The family of your mother is missing. I know that someone is missing. A void at her eye, some at her itch to stay. And after Rachel's Vineyard retreat, this is what one lady had to say. For 20 years, I have been haunted with the terrible guilt. That no one could take away. Tormented by the thoughts of what my child would have looked like. What my child would have done with his life. I aborted the only child that I would ever conceive. I was dead inside. I were dead in myself. Tried to take my life several times. At a Rachel's Vineyard weekend. I was able to share my grief, my guilt and my shame. I was allowed to mourn the loss of my child and experience God's mercy and forgiveness. And this was by a mother who had taken her daughter for an abortion. I took my daughter for an abortion because I thought I was saving her from such a terrible life. The guilt and shame that I have felt for so many years is just unbelievable. I heard about Rachel's Vineyard and decided to participate in one of their weekends. Through participating in this retreat, I was finally able to forgive myself. 
Rachel's vineyard is a gift from God. Rachel's vineyard er en gave fra Gud. This man had this to say, his wife had an abortion. Ein maver het her a seye, kone cha honen fek eisne fosterturk. I never knew my wife had suffered so much pain. Eg visste ikkje at kone cha mer heie point so nek. Over an abortion she had before we met. Vekne ei fosterturk hon fek arm vid mötst. It was wonderful to attend the retreat with her. Det var underfullt att Lutake och jag hade reträtt vid henne. And be her support in an area of her life where there was so much secret grief. Och stulle henne och jag hade ört sig och henne löv och henne var så nek sorg som är hemligt. Our marriage has been blessed. Och kruttjuna lär är väl sikna. And we are now closer than we have ever been. Och vi är nu tattare än vi har ångat i världen. I had the privilege of being able to, spir- to spiritually adopt her child. And finally, oh, I had received previous counselling, but nothing could prepare me for how I felt after attending Rachel's Vineyard weekend. It had been it was like a light had been turned on in my life again. The weight had been lifted from my shoulders. I was finally able to grieve for my baby. Without feeling the guilt I had been carrying for so long. My baby existed. So thank you very much for listening to me and I'd really say to you today please bring this message of hope out into the Faroe Islands. I say to us and take it to the Eastern Mediterranean or would be taking a day at Bere as near Boscap and Wown out with Ferry Jack and Ferry Ferry. Because I know there must be many broken wounded women out there. That a wide at the Mary Nick Quinn or some a broad or some are sorry. Who are afraid to share their pain. So my bench for a dialer point at us here. For fear of being judged and condemned. Just remember that there are people who care. And that at Rachel's Vineyard you will be, you will have our number one priority will be your confidentiality. What Rachel's Vineyard, Mr. Chamber the Farrier, to air, to attack the shield, the Ocra number eight priority. So please make that call. So rinse it till Rachel's vineyard. Make that call. Come and see us. There is hope. There is healing. Come or sit your ochen to air wound or to air grey. The mercy of God is so great. Good's nigh or so stour. It doesn't matter how far you've fallen. To air like a meter cross the length to our stock. His loving arms can reach down and pick you up. And Carlegs foot arm can come and near or take it up. Thank you very much. Thank in a few moments I will share with you about our weekends give you a little bit more detail on what we do Det är möjligt att jag tycker att att lite gång går runt att skriva det på här och så kommer vi få börjarna att sända den inte då men det här var bara en så kommer vi få börjarna att sända. Hela du kan jag använda det här här isnäin ommärling om börjarna här och dansken. Ja. Så kan vi läsa. Ja. Ibland ligger för sitt färg och ligger 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 ligger